There are three major laws that govern the policy, legislative and institutional mechanisms for implementing biotechnology innovations such as genetically modified organisms, also known as GMOs. Now, the Chief Executive Officer of the National Biosafety Authority, Dr. Roy Mugira, says the laws in place are effective and efficient, and the authority will in the coming days issue guidelines to be followed in the import or growing of these varieties. But Assessor Lale now tells us key experts, including a former agricultural minister, insist that the country still lacks proper legislation to regulate the implementation of biotechnology innovations. Kenya's journey to give biotechnology innovations the green light formally commenced in 2003 when it adopted the Katagina Protocol on Biosafety. Kenya would later ratify two more laws in 2006 and 2009 with the sole aim of providing relevant infrastructure, framework facilities and other resources for the rapid and safe development and application of science in fixing the food situation in the country. The 2003 Katagena Protocol on Biosafety makes it clear that products from new technologies must be based on the precautionary principle and allow developing nations to balance public health against economic benefits. Three years later, provision of relevant infrastructure, framework facilities and other resources for the rapid and safe development and application of biotechnology in agriculture, environment, health, industry and research was also introduced through the 2006 National Policy on Biotechnology Development that was approved by the Cabinet through the then Minister for Science and Technology, Dr. Noah Wekesa. But even with the efforts to put a law in place, not everyone was boarding the GMO boat at the time, including the current president. Until we are agreed as a country that we can have GMO, we will not have GMO. Until we develop our own local um, varieties using our own local expertise. The general policy framework was a guide within which scientists would play with the knowledge available and do research in controlled environment, such as greenhouses. Now, for us, it was also to improve our surveillance. In 2009, the Biosafety Act was established with the sole aim of creating the National Biosafety Authority that was mandated to provide policy, legislative and institutional mechanism for implementation of biotechnology innovations. And the principle is to ensure safety, and not only to ensure, also to assure. However, some key policymakers, including former agriculture minister who served in the late President Mwaikibaki's administration, argues that the country's governing laws on biotechnology innovations, such as GMOs, are too fragile. Given the fact that we, as Kenyans, have so many products in the market now, whether it is alcohol, whether it is foodstuff, or whatever it is that is already adulterated, by unscrupulous businessmen. GMO is not going to be different. We, can, we have always been doing uh, random surveillance, uh, picking stuff from shelves of supermarkets and checking those that are of, of uh, areas where it has been suspected to be producing GM products. But that was a requirement with a ban. Now, uh, when the ban is lifted, what we need to do is, uh, because we have um, a comprehensive monitoring and surveillance framework. Other than the Kenya Bureau of Standards, other agencies collaborating with the National Biosafety Authority in regulating GMOs include the Department of Public Health, Department of Vet Services, Kenya Plant Health Inspectorate Services, Kenya Industrial Property Institute, Kenya Wildlife Service, Pest Control Products Board, and the National Environmental Management Authority. It is a whole package, therefore, and when we take a product through the faces mm -hmm. and put a seal of approval mm -hmm. that this is safe, mm -hmm. indeed it is safe. Mm -hmm. 
According to the laid down biosafety regulations, the National Biosafety Authority must ensure research done under appropriate experimental conditions. Ensure open cultivation of genetically modified crops is safe for human health and the environment. Ensure safe movement of genetically modified materials in and out of the country. And ensure accurate consumer information and traceability of genetically modified products in the food supply chain. Seth Olale, Citizen TV, Nairobi.